What would you say if I said that my loneliness is killing me? That was the confession of a song back in the year of 2001. Simply stated in a transparent manner that my loneliness is killing me. I thought that that was hyperbole or someone just over-exaggerating their emotions. But new research has shown us in this area of loneliness that loneliness can be fatal. That loneliness can have a very detrimental effect on your health to the point that you began to struggle with diabetes and other chronic diseases. Loneliness can also be as detrimental to your health as smoking 15 cigarettes in a day. And that's how detrimental loneliness can be. Loneliness can truly be killing you. I'm going to talk today of three reasons that produce this chronic loneliness. And it has to do with loss, the loss of a marriage, the loss of a mate, or the loss in moving. When you think about it, it really does make a lot of sense. The first area we're going to discuss is the loss of a mate and the grieving process. This does make sense, especially if you are in a marriage that lasted 50 and 40 years and all of a sudden that person dies and you are now living without them. That person that was there for you in the good times and in the bad times. And now you find yourself all alone and your loneliness is killing you because you're grieving the death of a mate. And undoubtedly, we can relate or know what it's like to be separated from a mate, uh, to be separated from grandparents in death, separated a uh, child. Um, all these factors can play a role in this kind of chronic loneliness that can kill you. And most of us uh, know or can relate, especially in these pandemic times of unprecedented death of those who were very close. So you can come to the point where your loneliness is killing you as you deal with the death of a mate. And also, this can apply to breakups. It's not as traumatic, but it can be intense to the point that you're suffering from a broken heart. And as you suffer from a broken heart, your loneliness of being isolated and alone can make you feel alone or lonely. So a marriage dealing with grief, relationships that have torn apart can play a detrimental role in this kind of chronic loneliness that can make you feel that you are dying. And so, dealing with the loss of marriage, dealing with the loss of relationship or loss of friendships also. Close friendships sometimes come to an end over a period of time. And a good relationship is as the quantitative fact of a friendship. Friendship that's caught fire is the best way to start a marriage. And when a friendship that's caught fire and you are in a relationship, either marriage or a committed long-term relationship, and that relationship ends, then naturally you're going to struggle with that kind of chronic loneliness that can feel like that it is 
killing you. Um, so the loss of a marriage, the loss of a mate, whether it's an intimate relationship or even a friendship, can manifest the kind of loneliness that you can feel like is killing you. Another area, and I would put this under the losing of moving, moving on with your life. And what surprisingly, uh, research shows that retiring or retirement can produce this kind of chronic loneliness. And when you think about it, it really does make sense because it is an ending of uh, relationships with people that you see on a daily basis, as well as uh, being occupied with work on a daily basis. One of the great illustrations of uh, retirement that could cause the chronic loneliness is, I believe, is in the retirement of Tom Brady. Tom Brady sat at home, I believe, for a month or two, and, and I do believe that it was his loneliness that was killing him, and he decided to come back. Because think about all that sports people like Tom Brady lose. But number one, he didn't, he was not retiring because he no longer had the skills. He, he could uh, play as good as any. So that played a big role in why I do believe he came back. But he missed, and most professional athletes say, and I believe this is why loneliness can kill in uh, the athletic realm, is that they miss the companionship or the friendship of their fellow players. Coach K of Duke retired this year. And he spoke before he retired about being in the arena. And can you imagine being in the arena, a part of that for over 40 years and retiring? He could struggle with his loneliness killing you because it is a culture shock. And that's what the loneliness does. It is a culture shock and retirement does. It's a culture shock. You no longer have that thing that, that was the passion of your life that took control of your every day and every night. And you just all of a sudden retire. Many people who retire deal with uh, loneliness after they retire. And it really does make sense, especially for coaches uh, like uh, Roy Williams, who was in the arena and retired. You, you give up the companionship, you get up the, give up everything that, that it takes um, to produce purpose and why you are living. And you give that up. And when you do, you can enter a realm of chronic loneliness and your loneliness can be killing you. I did another TED talk um, about loneliness. And uh, one of the things that I shared in that TED talk is uh, transitions, even good transitions in life can put you in an arena of loneliness. Um, there was a song back when I was finishing high school that said, hey you, by the time, what you gonna do after high school? And uh, that period of time can be the most lonely time when you enroll and leave high school and enroll in college. You're leaving your family and your friends behind and the life that you had as a senior on the campus. And many of you can think back what it was like uh, to be seniors in your graduating year and you're starting all over. You have no family, no friends. So uh, transitioning from high school to university 
can be a big time struggle with loneliness. Having to choose the college that you would like to go to and all the steps and tests that are, you have to take uh, can really make you feel lonely and alone. And this is good transitions. And that's surprisingly great transitions in life can end up being some of the loneliest time in your life. Because another surprising thing that produces chronic loneliness is uh, moving to a new city or just starting a new job. Very interesting. My last talk, I shared about a young lady who graduated college and moved to New York to work in the fashion industry. And she left a safe uh, environment of university where you usually make friends for a lifetime. You may have joined all kinds of fraternities that are meant to help you to go forward in life. And you lose all that and go to a new city. And uh, that can be, the young lady was sharing surprising information on what it was like to live and to move into New York City, a city of 8 million people. And you feel alone. And it's because of that transition. Also, the transition of losing a job or the transition of starting a new job. Also be a surprising time of loneliness or changing your career because remember in all of these situations, you're usually moving away from family and friends and situation with the death of a relationship, the relationship you're moving away. It all has to do with moving. You're moving away. You have to move away because you lost a mate or the breakup produces chronic loneliness because you're, you have to move on with your life. Any moving that takes you away from your family and friends and your connection with people will produce chronic loneliness. Chronic loneliness. And you say, these are amazing uh, insights that you have given. Um, but how do you overcome the loneliness that is killing you? And I have to say, you overcome loneliness that is killing you by doing your best to stay connected to family and friends. Even when you move away, don't go away, stay connected. And also you overcome by starting and beginning new connections. And it is very, very hard when you move to a new city or go to university, but you have to try to be outgoing enough to establish new friendships. And it's not gonna happen uh, overnight, but it can happen over time as you continuously put yourself in a position uh, to make new friends and establish new uh, transparent relationship with others. And my occupation is pastor and of course I would suggest that you get tied to a church. A church is a wonderful way to get connected and also I would suggest that you do more research. Now you find yourself in one of those situations that should ease your mind to know that this is something that is common and it's usually something that is temporary if you make the right choices. And I'd like to encourage you, if you'd like to learn more, I wrote a book entitled, How to Overcome Psalm of Loneliness 
this book uh, will give you some great insights on how to overcome the loneliness that is killing you. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.